Let's move on to the second document, besides the quality manual, which lays the groundwork for the rest of your quality management system documentation. This following process will define how you handle any documentation around your QMS and your medical device. So before you start with the process itself, ask yourself and maybe discuss in your team, where do you want to store and manage your documentation? In this video and in our template, we will propose a document management system based on Google Drive. I've worked with a number of different tools though, Notion, Confluence, Linear, even self-hosted systems. And last but not least, maybe check out our own regulatory software for that purpose, Formwork. Whatever solution you go with, make sure you read up on the requirements and check if your solution is compliant. As always, we will therefore start with a look at the regulatory requirements. ISO 13485 paragraph 4.2.4 and 4.2.5 are your point of reference. They are formulated in a pretty tangible and practical manner, I would say. I'll just pick out a selection of the most important ones in my view. Starting off with the first one, documents must always undergo a review and release process prior to use in your company. Or the third one, changes to those documents must be traceable, so to say who implemented what and when. And they must be reapproved prior to the use of that updated document. Consider all the requirements of that list. Things like files must remain legible, prevent loss, and unintended use of outdated files. But also consider the more implicit requirements from it, as well as the paragraphs below. Any person that signs as creator, reviewer, or approver must be uniquely identifiable. And you must be able to put a timestamp on any actions. So for example, the release of a document and be able to trace back any changes that happened around that document. Next, let's dive right into the process. I'm sorry in advance, it's one of the longer ones. One of the first questions we're asked quite often concerns the language to be used. Especially if you're working in an international team, you can keep all documentation in English. But read our blog post article regarding translations to be aware of exceptions to that rule. Our overall experience is though, we've been through a number of audits with German authorities and notified bodies alike. And at least here in Germany, we've never had any issue with the fact that processes were written in English. Much different from data privacy documentation, by the way. Lawyers and authorities always insisted on translations into German. Second in the process, document and record labeling. We propose that you give all your documentation specific IDs. That is supposed to make clear which process the file is linked to, if it was formally reviewed and released and can be used in your organization, if it is outdated and archived, or for product documentation, which product and product version it belongs to. Additionally, we use abbreviations for the document type, SOPs, templates, lists. Obviously, the idea here is to make each and every document easily identifiable. And that's the explicit ISO 1345 requirement. Our proposed document IDs are just one way to solve this. If you have a better idea to comply with that, go ahead. And if you want, let us know about it. Let's just take a few seconds to go through some examples to better understand the document IDs we're describing here. For example, your process for feedback management. Give it some abbreviation, feedback management, FBM. Spell out the document type. We're talking about a process here. And then add the actual name or title of it. A list of suppliers your organization uses. This probably belongs to the purchasing process. It's going to be a list as a document type and then add the actual name. A template for employee contracts would probably be associated with your human resources and administration process. It would be a template and then add the actual name. Your organizational chart. 
would probably also be associated with your human resources and administration process. It would be an attachment to that process and then add the actual name. Now, the same template for employee contracts, but outdated, would still be associated with your human and resource administration process, would still be a template and carry the same name, but then would be archived at that point. And you need to add the expiration date. And that's your next requirement, the retention periods here. For the sake of simplicity, just never delete anything. Archive things instead. Moving on, you need to review your processes and your QMS documentation to ensure it's always up to date. Note that there's some reference to the quality management manual here. If an auditor ever asks you, this is one aspect to a risk-based approach of managing your QMS. You should review certain processes and documents more frequently than others. Finally, the document list of your QMS. This list contains all your QMS documentation. So that's something you will need to look at again and complete once you're done with all QMS work. Note this list will not include any files you create for your product technical documentation. I'll show you an example of the QMS list once we're done with this process. First, let's get started with the process steps. Again, keep in mind for startups, which are just getting started setting up their QMS, we propose using Google Drive but you can use any appropriate tool that you like. Step one, you start any new QMS document in a draft folder of Google Drive. Let's say in this folder, you have a draft, put it in there. Once you finalized it, you ping appropriate colleagues for their review and move it to the review folder. Once your colleagues approved the document, it moves to the release folder. According to the labeling conventions that we just looked at earlier, we add minus A for approved to the document title, indicating that people now can use this file as a point of reference. Step five, if any changes are needed, you create a copy of that file and start the previous process from new. Draft, review, release. Once a document becomes obsolete, you remove the minus A prefix from the document title and move it to the archive folder. Again, only delete files that are past the expiration date. Records can be managed in a more easygoing way than documents. Imagine any evidence and proof that you followed a process constitutes a record. And that can be a filled out template, like an employee contract or a supplier certificate that you saved, or an email exchanged with a user following your feedback management process, or any file that you created as part of your technical documentation following your software development processes. That's why you should only pay some attention to how you name your tech doc records. The rest of your records, typically, is not subject to labeling conventions. Where possible, make sure records show an author and a release date. As a consequence, records can reside anywhere in your email program, on your Figma board, or your Asana board, in Google Drive, or in your CRM. Mention your most important tools here. One thing is quite important. Records should not undergo change and version control like documents. At most, you only correct them. Maybe think of them as concert tickets. They are timestamped, one-time permission to the show, and they should not be released again and again and again. Last thing, you guessed it already. Never delete records either. This also accounts for records you store anywhere else in your organization. Any record might become important in an audit. Now that we're through with the process, I'll show you an example of how you can set up this mysterious QMS document list. First of all, we do have a template for this also on our website, but as often, this is only supposed to give you a rough 
idea of the structure of it, and it should definitely not be used in a Google document. Instead, you can use it in a sheet format like this one. So note the document IDs that you can find in the first column. We already talked about this in the process. The sheet should also give you an overview of the release dates of each individual document. And the criticality is derived from the process categories in your quality manual. We also talked about that in the process already. The criticality further defines your review period. Again, this is part of the risk-based approach to your QMS. Finally, a column for who is responsible. Always important to add that. That's it. Hope everything is clear and you're ready for the next steps of building your QMS.